Today's topic for discussion is early life origin of adult diseases. We all know a newborn baby can present with birth defect. 2 to 3 percent of all the newborns can be born with birth defects. Of all the birth defects, congenital heart disease are the commonest. Mostly the congenital heart disease usually present in the early infancy or in the immediate neonatal period or during childhood. But sometimes congenital heart disease like atrial septal defect can remain silent and present later in adulthood. In the same way, developmental diseases like developmental dysplasia of the kidneys can remain silent and present in the adult as a chronic renal failure. Do this topic of early life onset of adult disease means this? No, it's not. It's a separate entity. Now, developing countries like India are facing an epidemic of non-communicable diseases in the form of obesity, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, coronary heart disease and etc. Two-third of the mortality and morbidity of adult are because of those diseases. In spite of primary prevention methods in the form of balanced nutrition, exercise, stress reduction, but there was not a major breakthrough. So the researchers thought, are there any early life factors which can prevent the late onset adult diseases? Now, here comes Dr. Barker's hypothesis. Professor David Barker, a well-renowned researcher and epidemiologist from UK, in the 1980s, he hypothesized, proposed, studied and published his results in the Lancet as well as in his own book by the year 1992 stating that low birth weight babies, especially SGA babies, small for gestational age babies, who are the surrogate mother markers of the abnormal fetal environment are more prone to suffer from late onset adult diseases in the form of obesity, type 2 diabetes, hypertension, coronary heart disease. To explain in detail the Barker's hypothesis, Dr. Barker proposed the theory of fetal programming and its impact later in adult life. What does it mean? Under abnormal circumstances or unfavorable environment like a poor maternal nutrition, what happens? The fetus in utero, the cells can decrease in number and altered number, structure and metabolism of these things will happen and finally resulting in low birth weight. And these low birth weight babies, when exposed to overnutrition or abundant nutrition, lack of exercise and sedentary habits, they definitely result in adult diseases. In short, this is known as the mismatch theory, that is an abnormal in utero environment versus a favorable ex utero environment when they come out. This is the thing Barker's hypothesis. Also, Barker stated the important pathophysiology beyond this fetal programming are three processes. Number one, abnormal glucose insulin metabolism. What does it mean? When the nutrition in utero is unfavorable, what happens? To maintain a steady state blood glucose and blood glucose supply for the brain, what happens? The insulin secretion is reduced due to reduced isolate cell mass, number one, and insulin resistance happens in utero itself, resulting in uptake of the glucose by the muscle and other tissues are reduced so that the abundant blood glucose is diverted to the brain. And this abnormal metabolism in utero definitely leads to the type 2 diabetes in the adulthood. And the second theory he proposes decreased number of nephrons during the in utero due to the abnormal nutrition as a brain sparing effect. This decreased number of nephrons later can result in hypertension. And number three, the stress in the utero can alter the hypothalamo hypopituitaric adrenal axis resulting in glucocorticoid excess and alteration of the glucose and other metabolic derangements which will also result in adult diseases. In short, all these fetal programming as well as also known as metabolic programming results in fetal origin of adult diseases as proposed by Dr. David Barker et al. In addition to the fetal programming and fetal origin of adult disease concept by Dr. Barker et al. By the year 2000, this framework has been expanded 
and renamed as developmental origin of health and disease that is the developmental origin of health and disease or dohart concept dohart theory is based on the concept that origin of life diseases starts from the time of conception that is fertilization embryo and fetus and neonatal stages due to the interaction of the gene and the abnormal environment in the form of abnormal nutrition stress and other chemicals adult disease develops after delivery by the exposure to the abnormal environment in the form of over nutrition lack of exercise and stress so the disease develops secondary to both these in cells this dohart concept can be otherwise explained better in terms of developmental plasticity what do you mean by developmental plasticity the plasticity of a developing organism is nothing but when exposed to or challenged by the abnormal environment the molding occurs in such a way the developing organism adapts to the immediate environment also the predicted environment in the future it offers a survival benefit and mainly the disease occurs mainly due to the the mismatch between the predicted environment and the actual environment what is the underlying cause of this or underlying factor which decides this plasticity epigenetics is the process which is mainly behind this plasticity what is epigenetics epigenetics is nothing but environmental alteration of the genetic expression without altering the basic dna resulting in birth of the unique birth phenotype due to epigenetics a one single genotype can give rise to plenty of phenotypes nowadays there are plenty of diseases and plenty of diseases are now getting correlated to this epigenetic process large number of studies are there stating that epigenetics is the basic reason behind developmental diseases so now the research is mainly based on the alteration in the epigenetics and modifying the epigenetics to prevent and or modify the late onset adult diseases okay so far we are talking about the metabolic diseases are there any other diseases which dates backs are to the early life yes chronic respiratory conditions like copd and asthma have their origin in early life as early as fetus and due to prematurity and altered lung structure and metabolism as well as early allergen synthesization and early respiratory viral diseases in the form of rsv and rhinovirus all these things interact to produce and alter the airway structure and metabolism leading to late onset copd and asthma are there any other diseases which can have early life origins definitely Re- reproductive issues are there mainly the precocious puberty infertility are having their origins in early life as well as mental health issues are also found to have their origin in the in utero environment so whether only the sga babies are getting affected no not at all even lga babies that is large for gestational age babies are also more prone to late onset adult diseases not only adult diseases in the form of metabolic diseases but also cancers so in short to conclude the low birth weight baby and sga babies are more prone to suffer from late onset adult diseases number 1 number 2 development of plasticity affects the utero and makes the fetus to adapt according to the maternal environment number 3 developmental plasticity is mainly decided by the epigenetic process and epigenetic process is the one which is coming up in a bigger way and main research is mainly going behind this epigenetic process to alter or modify to prevent the late onset adult diseases okay and further down the lane now dohart theory as is coming with a new perception that prevention of adulthood diseases in the form of alteration of early vital 1000 days and its impact in later life early life 1000 days and its what does it mean and its detailed discussion will be done by my colleague dr anjali etal in the next lecture thank you one and all